You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. If I were to give you sort of a general synopsis of how the quarterback play went, I think that nobody really did anything to stand out greatly on Saturday. But then again, we've seen spring games where Steven Rivers looked awesome. I just don't put a ton into how it all transpired. I'm more looking for skill set and things that I like. Brian Kelly pointed out Miles Brennan's poise and you know, great comfort and knowledge of the offense and familiarity and you know, all that sort of stuff makes good decisions with the ball. Absolutely. For me, Jaden Daniels' feet, I thought, were a huge part of a physical skill set that's a differentiator. Uh, some of you said, well, he was inaccurate throwing the ball. That's true at times. How much of that has to do with still developing timing with receivers that he's only been around since March? You give some of that time. But... You know, I, I don't know that we learned a ton about the quarterbacks that we didn't know, but it was it was cool to see them all out there uh, playing. If I had to tell you my biggest takeaways from from the spring game itself, I would start with confirmation of things that that we assume, and that's receiver defensive line. Everyone that's asked you know about about this team, any interview I've done, they'll say, well, "What did we learn, or what do we know about this team?" And I've said, well, I think they're going to be really good on the defensive line. I think they're going to be really good at receiver. And that's receiver without even having Kayshawn Butte available. Well, they all look good. And it didn't matter who was throwing the football. Jack Besh caught a couple of touchdowns. Malik Neighbors flashed. A Dre Jenkins got open for a, a deep one down the right side. Only dropped it, though. But, um, but still, Brian Thomas had a one-handed catch. Chris Hilton caught what would, would have been a touchdown. Couldn't get a toe tap down in the left front corner of the end zone. They are deep and talented, and that's we saw Kyron Lacey make a, a play early in the game. That's without Keishon Butte. So, yeah, the receivers, I feel really good about that group. Defensive line, same. Um, I mean, they are deep and talented, and they push the pile, and Mason Smith, like, he had one deflected pass where it didn't even look like he was trying to deflect the pass. He just kind of threw his arm out there and wanted to bat a pass down. Uh, if it's against the run or if it's getting pressure from your your front four, that group looks deep, as deep and talented as we've been talking about. So I would say confirmation on those two things. A couple of my other takeaways, and I'm not going to run through statistics because I think statistics in a spring game, it just, it's just it's foolish to run through because it's all situational and our bro our brains are programmed to think of stats a certain way because we watch so much so much football over our lives that I don't think the stats particularly matter. Um, I will tell you that I get it with Greg Penn. I get the hype around Greg Penn. 6'1", 237, he fills out the uniform, looks really, really good, and as they're hoping Micah Baskerville maybe takes more of a leadership role, and they've worked in Greg Penn and Mike Jones. I think the and I know Baskerville can play because we've seen Baskerville play. Like he can be a Micah Baskerville can be a hundred tackle guy in this league. And don't worry about it. But if you're trying to incentivize him to be more of a leader, more vocal, whatever it is, I don't know. Or maybe you're just trying to give someone like Greg Penn that opportunity to see to to learn what he can be. Greg Penn looks the part absolutely. The thing I wonder about with Greg Penn is it, he could be the next in that line uh, of great linebackers that have come through here. The thing I wonder about is has the game slowed down? You know, in a controlled scrimmage for a a spring game, uh, and and you're not getting really exotic looks or anything like that, you're not going to be as challenged as you will whenever you're lining up against Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin is trying to confuse you with different formations and sets and all that sort of stuff. So it, we saw this with guys like Kendall Beckwith. Uh, for years, we had the, the DJ Welter-Kendall Beckwith conversation. DJ was that solid middle linebacker that always knew where he was going to be, but Kendall Beckwith was a freak show and eventually got to the point where, like, put the freak show on the field. Uh, I, I would say the same, you know, with... Um, Devin White was a running back and converted. 
And then ultimately, you, you put him on the field, he became an All-American. I'm not saying that's what Greg Penn's going to be, but you could sort of see like he's in that mold as well. Let's see what it looks like on the field, but physically he looks the part. Um, I'll say the same about Will Campbell at left tackle. Brian Kelly's been pretty adamant that with Will Campbell at left tackle, it sort of solidified or stabilized, let me say that, the offensive line. And that really goes without saying. You know, you didn't hear much from B.J. O'Jolari on Saturday because Will Campbell was out there stonewalling everybody. And it's incredibly impressive that as a true freshman in his first spring football as an early enrollee, after two weeks, they ran him out there at left tackle, and he's held the line in a very literal sense. Um, yes, I, I think Will Campbell looks every bit the part of a guy that could be a three-year starter at LSU and go be a top half of round one draft pick, provided he stays healthy and all that stuff, which you hope for him and every player. Uh, what a great luxury it is to have him to let everything else fall in place. I would tell you, though, that I think center is still a concern. I don't think Charles... Now, look, he was when you're lining up against guys like Mason Smith, that's a huge challenge, but you're going to see dudes like that week in and week out in the SEC. Now, Garrett Dellinger didn't practice this spring, and he very well could be a, a starter. So do you move Tremont Shorts to center and let Dellinger play guard? Does Dellinger get reps at center? Don't know. And they'll figure that out as they move along, but that's one where I'll say, yeah, you still have to, have to get that answered at center. Uh, I thought the running backs ran really well. John Emery showed some really solid burst, which was great to see. Um, I didn't love Jay Ward submarine tackling John Emery at his knees. I It worked. It was effective. I'm totally good with Jay Ward doing that to opponents, but please don't do that to, to, John, to John Emery uh, during the spring game. Um, but I'll tell you, the guy that, that, I, that caught my eye most after Emery was Armani Goodwin. And I don't know that the, I don't think there's a lack of options. Trey, I'm not, it's not to say Trey Bradford didn't look good or Josh Williams won't have a role or Noah Kane coming in, but Armani Goodwin looked like he has really filled out in the last year. They got him listed at 198 pounds. So he's he, he's not too big, but he looked thicker, looked pretty explosive. He scored the first touchdown when he hit the left pylon. Um, you know, kind of cut and made that play right toward the pylon. I, I think you're not in any way lacking for options at running back. And that's got to be what what has Brian Kelly salivated. As a matter of fact, here was Brian Kelly talking about the running back group and the job they did this spring. Those backs run really hard. You better tackle them. You better get our backs on the ground. You saw that today. They can catch the ball, come out of the backfield. You know, we'll continue to work on some things that are, you know, in my eye, some weaknesses. But they bring some traits across the board that I think are highly competitive in this league. And Brian Kelly also kind of, as he has a lot this spring, uh, glowed a little bit whenever he talked about John Emery, who is, is right at this point clearly LSU's lead back. I was really impressed with him today. Uh, you know, he was probably, uh, you know, I don't want to give you an exact percentage because I'm not sure, but he was less than healthy. You know, I mean, most would have said, why would you play him today? But he wanted to go, I mean, because, you know, he's he was like, look, I'm going to get banged up during the season. I want to know what it's like not to play 100% because I'm not going to be 100%. And um, so just kind of that kind of mindset, you know, says a little bit about him. And he wanted to get out there. And, you know, I was, I was proud of him. You know, he, he fought through, you know, not being 100%. And we saw what kind of back he is, even banged up. I mean, you you could tell. Uh, um Pete Thamel has a piece up right now at ESPN.com. It's a feature on Brian Kelly, and he specifically features John Emery, where he says this is a kid who's had kind of a lost career. In some respects, he has, because last year was basically taken from him because of the academic issue, and then you had a COVID year. I mean, and then he was behind Clyde on the championship team, so he really, he's such a talented guy and hasn't had the chance to show it. Here's hoping this will be his opportunity for, for John Emery in the season when they need someone like John Emery to emerge. Um, a couple of other things from Brian Kelly. Uh, he did sort of summarize the offensive line and his feelings on them here coming out of spring. The O-line gets better. Um, Campbell was really good today. Um, you know, I, I thought Turner was consistent. We had the one, you know, uh, situation with, a, with an illegal snap, but... 
Um, by and large, I, I thought the offensive line got better as as the the you know the game went on. Remember, they have two spots remaining that they can fill. And before spring, Brian Kelly said they were going to address tight end and offensive line. Uh, if those options are out there, they're going to address it. Now, Brian Kelly did also uh, post spring talk about wide receiver and the tight end spot. They can go get the football. We need to be a little bit mentally tougher, play in and play out, but they can compete at a high level. I like Kobe Taylor today. I mean, I, I thought he showed himself more than just, you know, a pedestrian uh, player. He's long. He showed some yardage after the catch. We need to, he needs to live, if possible, in the weight room with us. And if he does that, you know, with Mashburn, you know, maybe, maybe we got something there. So that's an upgrade for us. And if there's an option to add to that position group, my assumption is they'll still look to do that. So coming out of spring, I think more than anything, the biggest takeaways are not so much X's and O's. This spring was about starting to change the culture at LSU. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it is so true. The more you listen to the interviews Brian Kelly has done, the more you read these features, with if it's Ross Dellinger, the one that I mentioned about Pete Thamel at ESPN, it is so obvious how broken and disorganized the culture and processes were within LSU football. And it was evidence in everything they did on the field. From trying to get plays in to all the off the field stuff that we all know and don't need to rehash, it just it was obvious. And and this time right now feels so much about Brian Kelly starting to reverse that, to implement processes that are going to make this whole organization function more efficiently. And then you start to add top tier recruiting classes and building on top of it. And now you have a machine that's running at, at a championship level, like Alabama, like Georgia, like Clemson. And LSU's trying to get back to that. And uh, they probably got the right guy to do it. Uh, and that all started with this one. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.